so let's discuss another problem in classical mechanics so here a person standing on top of a tower of height h throws a ball with a velocity u making an angle theta with the horizontal if the range is to be maximum the angle of projection should be equal to so here in the question what they are saying is a person standing on top of a tower so this is the tower top of the tower this point in this diagram uh, throws a ball with velocity u so the ball is thrown with velocity u in this direction uh, making an angle theta with the horizontal so this is the horizontal that is parallel line so this is a line so he is standing on the top of the tower over this point this is the top of the tower and from here he is throwing the ball with velocity u and it is making an angle theta with the horizontal so this is a line parallel to this ground surface that is nothing but horizontal so it is making an angle theta with horizontal uh, if the range is to be maximum the angle of projection should be equal to so what we want is the range that is from here to here that means the point from which the ball is thrown to the point where uh, that is the point it is a point on the ground from where the ball is thrown that is uh, and uh, where the ball has actually fallen finally so the person uh, throws the ball from this point so finally the ball falls over here because of gravitation of uh, actually the ball moves up again it moves down because of gravitational force of uh, gra earth's gravity and from here he is at the top from so we, we have to take the foot of this tower so the distance from here to here is nothing but range that only if we are standing on the ground and if we throw a ball that would be like this so if you stand on the ground, if we throw stone, it would go like this. So this is nothing but range in that case. So in here also in the same manner, from here to here is the range. So what they are asking here is, if the range is to be maximum, the angle of projection should be equal to. So here they are, this range is maximum. So for what angle of projection is this range would be maximum? That one we need to find out. So that is the problem. So understanding the problem is very important. So now next thing is the equation of motion of the projectile is. So the equation of motion. So has the. Uh, so that is uh, acceleration d square r by dt square. dr by dt is nothing but. Uh, that is rate of change of the position vector is nothing but velocity and d square r by dt square is nothing but acceleration acting on that ball so as this ball is thrown up initially initially the ball was thrown up that means it is moving in the upward direction against to the earth's gravity hence uh, uh, minus g that means uh, it, uh, it decelerates initially uh, its velocity goes on increasing sorry decreases so when we throw a ball, it go, its velocity goes on decreasing, decreasing, decreasing and finally it reaches zero. So again it falls down. Again it goes on increasing, increasing, increasing. So initially we would be having retardation. Uh, so that is nothing but negative acceleration. That means the velocity goes on decreasing. So hence the equation of motion of the projectile and that is acceleration acting on the body is nothing but minus g. That is negative direction to g. g acts downwards. But the uh, ball is going in upward direction. So that's why we have d square r by d t square equals minus g. And integrating twice with respect to t we get. So actually this is from uh, whether do we do even if we do integration. Uh, if we neglect this negative sign we would get this. And uh, actually this is a formula that we used to get from s is equals to ut plus half a t square. So, yes, is equals to ut plus 
half a t square so from this we have we could have this form so displacement r is also u t plus half a t square in the place of a we are having g t square they have replaced it where the origin is kept at the point of projection or in terms of x and y components so here we need to keep origin at the point of projection so this is the point of projection from here we are projecting the ball so this is the point of projection so origin we need to imagine origin at this point so or in terms of the x and y components so now what we have to do is x uh, from this formula x i cap plus y j cap we have we would have for r x i cap plus y j cap in the same way for u u x i cap plus u y j cap uh, sorry u y j cap and like that they are saying here so from here we have we would have x is equals to u t plus half a t square so if we consider in x direction motion in x direction actually the ball is uh, thrown in this manner so if we draw like this we get direction of velocity so this is the direction of velocity so these are nothing but components of this velocity vector so here if you see so this is theta so here if we draw tangent we will get the same thing like here so theta so this is u cos theta and this is u sin theta theta so that is which is along uh, theta that is something like u cos theta and u sin theta you can split up this u into this two components so here if you if we see velocity in x direction so this is the velocity in y direction vertical direction this is the, the velocity in horizontal direction so the ball is moving in this direction so hence uh, for along the horizontal direction displacement is x horizontal direction so that is from here to here so this is the horizontal displacement and this is the vertical displacement so yeah u cos theta so u t in the place of u we have this uh, velocity in horizontal direction so u t so this is only u cos theta t plus half a t square so if we see in horizontal direction there is no any resistance acting there hence uh, if we neglect the effect of resistance that means uh, resistance due to air if we neglect then there would not be any acceleration in x direction that means the ball would move with constant velocity u cos theta u cos theta u cos theta in its entire generally along the x direction so there would not be any change in velocity along x direction so it would be only u cos theta so there will not be uh, any change it will remain the same so uh, as acceleration is nothing but rate of change of velocity as there is no change in velocity in x direction hence we have acceleration in x direction zero that is ax is equals to zero that's why uh, s is equals to ut plus half a t square uh, so displacement along x direction so ut in the place of u we are having u cos theta velocity along x direction plus half a t square a is zero ax is zero along uh, horizontal direction there is no acceleration acting on the body because we are neglecting uh, air resistance and y so if we this is along horizontal direction now if we consider vertical direction so in vertical direction displacement is y so this is the displacement from here to here this is range so anything any displacement here there is something like x now y so along y direction what is the change so this is this 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 so everything comes under that displacement in y direction so in vertical direction velocity is u sin theta so from here we are having u sin theta in vertical direction so u sin u t in this time u sin theta t plus half a t square so in vertical direction we are, acceleration is minus g so minus g in the place of a minus g so a y is nothing but minus g in this case so half a half g t square is nothing but minus half g t square is another half a t square in the place of a minus g so well uh, acceleration along vertical direction is minus g hence we are having this two from this formula this is equals to u t plus half a t square now 
eliminating t begin the trajectory of the projectile so now what we have to do is eliminate t that is from this equation x is equals to u cos theta t is nothing but x by u cos theta from this first equation t is nothing but x by u cos theta so now we need to substitute this t value of t in this equation so if we substitute u sin theta into t that is nothing but u sin theta into x by u cos theta so u u would get cancelled into x uh, tan theta because sin theta by cos theta so we would have tan x tan theta hence we are having x tan theta here by the x tan theta and next half g t square in the place of t x x by u cos theta so x square by u square cos square theta x square by u square cos square theta so 1 by cos square theta is nothing but secant square theta because 1 by cos theta is nothing but secant, uh, secant theta hence we would have minus half g in the place of t x uh, uh, x by u cos theta whole square that is uh, x square by u square 1 by cos square theta is sin uh, secant square theta so it is seen that the trajectory is parabola so the, it looks like a equation of uh, uh, parabola so it is of the parabolic form hence the trajectory of the body that is the path followed by the ball in its motion during its motion that means uh, from the time of its projection to the time of reaching the ground so this is nothing but parabolic form it's like a parabola Since the origin is taken at the point of projection, when the projectile hits the ground, it will have the coordinates r comma minus h. So here origin is taken at the point of projection. So here it is nothing but zero comma zero. This is the origin. So this is x axis. This is y axis. So when it hits the ground here, so from here to here is nothing but range, as I have already said. So range and uh, x component is range and y component if you see so here it is 0 comma 0 so if we move in downward direction this is nothing but negative y axis that is nothing but minus h hence r comma minus h hence r comma minus h we are having here so when the product hits the ground it will have the coordinates r comma minus h where r is the range of the, uh, distance between the foot of the tower and the point at which it hits the ground so that is nothing but this is the foot of the tower this is the tower and this is the foot of the tower to the point it hits the ground so this entire thing is nothing but range as we said and h is the height of the tower now what we have to do is we have to substitute this coordinates in this equation so r comma minus h so as this is parabola so all the points on this parabola must satisfy its own parabolic equation so this parabola would have its own equation so the points which are lying on this parabola must, sat must satisfy that equation so that's the thing we are using here Hence, now parabolic has the parabolic equation is this. Now we have to substitute the place of y minus h. So y minus h, the place of uh, x r. So here x is there, here r. Here also x square is there, here r square. So this is the thing we are having. Now for r to be maximum, so r is maximum when dr by d theta is zero is equal to zero. That means uh, we would have a curve. So we would get a curve like thing so or maximum for a theta angle this is uh, like if you plot a curve between r and theta we would have like uh, something like so if we plot a curve between r and theta we would have something like this form so at particular theta r would be maximum so this is the thing we need to find out so if we draw tangent here at this point at this point so at this point if you draw tangent what happens this is parallel to x-axis we know that tan theta uh, tangent uh, slope is nothing but slope of the curve is nothing but tan theta and theta is nothing but angle so here angle is zero so tan zero is equals to zero 
so slope must be equal to 0 and we know y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 in general dy by dx is nothing but slope here in the place of uh, y axis we are having r and in the place of x axis we are having theta so dr by d theta must be equal to 0 that is slope must be equal to 0 hence dr by d theta must be equal to 0 So for r to be maximum dr by d theta must be equal to 0 and d square r by dt theta square must be less than 0. So this condition also must, has, uh, must also should be satisfied. So differentiating with uh, respect to uh, so this is the condition for maximum. So if we are finding minimum then we will be having d square r by d theta square greater than 0. Now so differentiating with respect to time t and equating dr by d theta to 0 we get um, based on this so we need to so actually with respect to theta we need to differentiate so here this equation is there so we need to di differentiate this uh, equation with respect to theta so minus dh by d theta is nothing but 0 because height of the tower is a constant so dh by d theta is 0 and r uh, is a constant so range uh, so we would get uh, some value and uh, sorry so actually here minus dh by d theta is 0 because height of the tower is constant and here it is of the uv form uh, d by d theta of r tan theta because range is dependent on the angle of projection that is the thing we need to fi find here so for how much uh, theta range would be maximum so hence we would have dr by d theta equals to 0 so if you differentiate by using vdu plus udv you would be having r tan theta differentiation of tan theta is nothing but second square theta and if we need to keep tan theta aside and dr by d theta dr by d theta is zero so hence that term would be neglected from this equation so that term would become zero again the same for this equation also uh, the same thing would apply so here g by 2 and u square if we keep aside so here relation is uh, or uh, range depends on particular angle theta so again here also if we apply uv formula so here what we are doing is keeping r square aside and differentiating secant square theta so differentiation of secant square theta with respect to theta is nothing but n into x power n minus 1 that is minus differentiation of x power n is nothing but n into x power n minus 1 so in the place of n we are having 2 2 into secant theta power uh, 2 minus 1 again has seen we need to differentiate secant theta so here this is a function secant theta is not is a function so first if we differentiate it, it will, we will get n into x power n minus 1 again differentiation of that uh, secant theta that is nothing but secant theta into tan theta so already we are having 2 into secant theta that multiplied with differentiation of secant theta that is secant theta into tan theta so we would have 2 secant square theta into tan theta after a complete differentiation and again what we have to do is keep this secant square theta by u square aside and we need to differentiate r with respect to theta r square with respect to theta so we would get 2 into x power n minus 1 dr by d theta but dr by d theta is 0 hence that another term would get uh, would be z would become 0 so finally we would have this term so after differentiating this entire equation with respect to theta and uh, replacing dr by d theta by 0 we would have this complete equation now here if you see here secant square theta here also secant square theta can be taken aside and if we send this r that side or as this uh, this term to that side so it would be positive and r r would get cancelled and finally you would have 2 2 also would get cancelled and finally you would have uh, tan theta would be here so u square by rg so here r 1 or would get cancelled 
uh, after sending this one to the side actually here sequence by data sequence by data will get cancelled one or one or would get would be eliminated and here two two would get cancelled so finally if you send that side so what would be remaining is uh, u by uh, u square by gr this u square would go over that side and gr would get divided so as we are cancelling out all sequence square data one would be remaining equals to 1 and to, uh, multiplied with this u square and divided by gr so we will be having after simplification tan eta equals u square by gr that is nothing but theta equals tan inverse of u square by gr so sequence meaning here is the condition for extremum non uniform maximum so the here this is the in the in the same way for minimum also this condition would get satisfied whether it is maximum or minimum uh, this condition would be satisfied so if you are having minimum suppose like this so for minimum how that minimum also tangent would be parallel then that means uh, to this x axis and tan theta equals to zero here also same here also same so that's why it said then is the condition for extremum not necessarily for maximum but in the present problem the minimum is clearly zero or equals to zero so in this present problem uh, minimum you know, from the diagram we could imagine it has simply if we throw up at uh, 90 degrees if we throw up again it will fall down without uh, going forward in the x, x direction so range would be zero so in this uh, problem it is clear that range is zero minimum that is the minimum so we need not take second order derivative test and the problem itself shows that it is a maximum so uh, here the problem itself shows it is a maximum because r equals to zero is the minimum so the angle of projection for the maximum range is so for maximum range angle of projection is this that is theta is tan inverse of u square by 2r we can also find the value of maximum range so now uh, for uh, which value of theta range is maximum we have asked us so this is theta for this value of theta range would be maximum and that maximum range also could be also be found out by us that is by substituting so minus h plus or tan theta is nothing but u square by gr so we need to substitute in this equation tan theta u square by gr so substituting in this equation so minus h plus or u square by gr and uh, what we are having is second square theta so secant square theta minus tan square theta is equals to 1. So secant square theta is nothing but 1 plus tan square theta. And uh, 1 plus tan square theta is nothing but 1 plus u power 4 by g square r square. u power 4 by g square r square. So 1 plus secant square theta. So, sorry, 1 plus tan square theta. So secant square theta value would be this. So g, so half g r square by u square would be as usual so in place of second square theta we, we would be having this one after simplification so and the next thing okay so the next thing is so this is the equation now what we have to do is so if we observe here 2 h u square by g so here we need to multiply uh, on both sides with 2 u square by g both sides of this equation for simplification so if we do that 2 u square h by g we are having so here in this case uh, already u square is there so again 2 u power 4 so u power 4 by already another g so r r would get cancelled so u power 4 by g square 2, 2 u square plus g so under uh, what we are here actually we need to multiply with minus on both sides so after multiplying with minus here we would be having plus here minus here plus so that is here we would be having minus and u square by g so here u square u square would get cancelled by g g g would get cancelled so uh, and uh, this uh, r square and 2 also would get cancelled so only r square would be remaining so if it is taken inside so after multiplication with minus sign you will be having r square here so r square multiplying on both sides by minus and here if you see r square r square would get cancelled u square by g would get cancelled only what would be remaining is u power 4 by g square so that one uh, would be remaining so we need to keep this u power 4 by g square like that only and this r square 
so r square we need to keep like that only so here if you see here u power 4 by g square here also u power 4 by g square so here it is minus minus 2 plus 1 that is only minus 1 so minus 2 u power 4 by g square plus u power 4 by g square would be minus u power 4 by g square so we need to that uh, see send that minus u power 4 by g square this side so if we send that side so we would be having r square is equals to 2h u square by g plus u power 4 by g square so here if we take uh, u square by g square common u square by g square so here 2hg we would be having and u square by g square here u square would be remaining so if we take square root again so finally we would have r so this is maximum r that is only u by g square root of u square plus 2hg so the maximum range formula for maximum range is this and the angle at which the range would be maximum is this tan inverse of u square by gr so this is the thing we wanted to find out in this problem so thank you